Okay, I think we'll go ahead and get started. Um, reading some great welcomes and hellos in the chat. Um, I see we have somebody from Melbourne, Australia with us today. Welcome, that's super exciting. Um, thank you, we're back with uh, Virtual Evenings for Educators, Art, Resilience and Healing. Um, to all of you who were with us at the lecture last week or any of the other workshops, thank you so much for sticking with the program. I know that a multi-night program is, is a big lift. Um, and for those of you joining for the first time since the program started today, um, we're really happy to have you alongside us and to make some art together tonight. Um, and to all of you, whether you've been coming the last week or so or not, thank you for choosing us over the Dodgers. Um, I did not realize when I organized this program that it would have such intense competition. So thank you for choosing us. Um, my name is Laura Schilling. I am the teacher programs coordinator at LACMA, and um, my pronouns are she, her. I am a light-skinned or fair-skinned white woman with um, my hair pulled back. I have blue eyes. I'm wearing a blue shirt today and some gold necklaces. Um, behind me is uh, some white closet doors and some artwork on the wall. Um, and yeah, we're just so happy to have you back. Um, Virtual Evenings for Educators is a four-part series happening this month. Um, and we have three other programs happening over the course of the school year. Um, we have one in December that I'll talk about in just a little bit, one in February and one in April. Um, the April program we're hoping to have in person. That is the goal. Um, we're currently transitioning back to in-person programming very slowly at LACMA. And um, as for accessibility features today, we do have live captions. So if you'd like to um, look at those throughout, please click live transcript um, at the bottom of your Zoom screen and then click show subtitle. My colleague Susie Castillo is also providing tech support today and she can help you out if you have any issues. Just send her a private message. Um, Susie's going to come on and say hello for just a sec so you know who she is. Hello everyone, I'm Susie Castillo. My pronouns are she, her. I'm a fair-skinned Latina woman with short dark hair glasses, dark eyes, a black shirt that appears purple, uh, curtains, pinata in the background. So if y'all have any questions, please send me a direct message and I'll do my best to help. Thanks, Susie. Um, and if you haven't done so already, please take a moment to introduce yourselves in the chat. Let us know how you're doing today. Um, provide an acknowledgement of the native lands you are on. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and share a land acknowledgement um, representing LACMA. So LACMA respectfully acknowledges that the lands on which our museum is built and the region that we serve is the ancestral and unceded territories of the Gabrielinho Tangva, Gabrielinho Keats, Fernandinho Tataviam, and Venturinho Chumash peoples. Los Angeles County has been and is home to many indigenous peoples. Um, and I'd just like to emphasize that um, when we say that LA is home, continues to be home to many indigenous peoples, that includes all of the tribal peoples previously mentioned, as well as migrant communities of indigenous peoples. Um, so just keep that kind of at the front of our minds when we're thinking about um, indigenous communities here in LA. And um, we'll go on to the next slide. Um, uh, very excited to announce that the Obama portraits are coming to LACMA um, starting November 7th. We're having a big community opening day on November 7th. Um, please feel free to join us then. Um, we are also planning a lot of teacher programs around this show. The show has an accompanying exhibition featuring a lot of artworks that are in LACMA's permanent collection called Black American Portraits. And this show really centers love, abundance, family, and community um, in the Black community. So it's just going to be just an amazing occasion to see these two shows. Um, and our first program that's coming up centering on the Obama portraits is a workshop with educators from the National Portrait Gallery in Washington, D.C. on November 3rd. Um, and the sign up for that is on our website. Um, Susie's also going to share a document in the chat that has links to sign up for all of our upcoming events. Um, as well as a link to our mailing list to sign up if you're not on it and a promo code if you're in the area um, to come see um, LACMA exhibitions for free for you and a guest. So definitely check out that document. Um, that first program's on November 3rd and then we also have an educator speaker series program on November 10th with artist Ada Pinkston 
who's going to be talking about a project that she did on historic Angelino Biddy Mason. And then finally, um, our kind of grand finale of programs on these two landmark exhibitions um, is the December Evenings for Educators program, um, which will take a close look at the two shows with a lecture by Dr. Liz Andrews and two hands-on workshops with LACMA teaching artists. The lecture and the two workshops are going to be virtual events. And then we also have this special open house at LACMA on campus on Tuesday, December 7th from 6.30 to 9 p.m. Um, you are all invited to attend. Um, there will not, however, be a link to sign up for this event on our website um, because it is limited to attendance for teachers only, as well as some students from our partner schools. We'll, we'll only be communicating about it via email. So make sure you're signed up for our email list um, so you receive that. And then finally, if you're participating for um, LAUSD salary point credit today or professional development hours credit, uh, make sure you fill out the survey that'll be in the chat uh, in the last five minutes of the program. So Susie will be sharing the link to the survey. Um, fill that out, make sure you put in your contact info at the bottom and we will keep track of your hours. And with that, I'm going to introduce our teaching artist for the evening, Katie Lipset. Katie is a collage artist, illustrator, and teaching artist at LACMA, the Holocaust Museum, and the Skirball Cultural Center. She earned her BA in art history from Barnard College, Columbia University. Welcome, Katie. Thanks so much. Thank you. It's great to be here, and I really appreciate everyone coming after work. I know you've all had very long, big in-person days, and so I'm really glad that we're together um, so you can learn something new to do with your students that will hopefully uh, be inspiring. Um, so, um, oh, before I go any further, I just wanted to describe myself. I am a light-skinned woman with dark curly hair, big 1980s glasses, uh, a black uh, sweatshirt, um, a red LACMA t-shirt, and behind me are uh, white closet doors, books, and all kinds of paraphernalia, part of my uh, garage office. Um, anyway, thank you all for joining us. And uh, this is a workshop called Blueprint of My Resilience. And I know you've heard that word a lot this week, or maybe since you've been back in school, um, but we're gonna kind of explore um, a way to make some art that will allow your students to explore their own resilience. Um, next slide, please. So let's look at this word. I'm sure you all know it, but I think sometimes the students hear it and they don't necessarily know what it means. Um, and so here's a really simple definition, the ability to recover quickly from difficulties. Um, I always think of it like a rubber band, you know, you stretch it and then it boings back. It might look a little different, but it's pretty resilient. Um, in the chat, would you share one thing that has helped you to be more resilient during the pandemic? Um, and I can look at that and comment on it. Pilates. Yeah. Family. Thank you. Friends, exercise, family, friends. Oh, look at that. Netflix. <laughs> Slack lining. Oh, I know what that is. Um, walks in the sunshine. Yes. Walks, walking, yoga, friends, dancing, my children, focusing on work and staying away from the news. That's smart. Cooking, a beer each evening, bread making. When was someone going to say that? There it is. Um, art journaling, chasing sunsets. I know for myself, it's been yarn painting and meditation. Um, painting, wow. Oh, cooking with Chef Marcella. Is that like Marcella Hazen? Um, reflecting on the, oh, wow. Reflecting on the trials my grandparents experienced and their resilience. That's interesting. Yes, it's probably always good to look at that. Um, thank you. Thank you all for sharing. I hope you'll all take a moment to look at those um, in the chat. Um, so let's look at the piece of art we're going to refer to tonight that's going to be our inspiration. Um, 
I'm not going to really say anything on it. I'd really like to see, to hear what you are all seeing. And when I ask that question, I really mean observe and share. You don't have to infer anything yet. You could just observe and share what you are seeing um, in the chat. Um, Oh, reveal. Yes, that's nice. Shapes. Yes. Peel back. Oh, I like that. Curled paper edges. Cutouts. I don't know. These words are very delectable to me. Background. Tears. Tears. <laughs> Diagram. Sky blue. Layers. Scroll. Pattern. Shape. Background. Interesting. More shapes. Layers. Mm hmm. Um, thank you. Oh, more folds, shapes, positive and negative space. Thank you. Fine lines. Looks like a floor plan cut up and changed and disoriented. Thank you. Nice observation. Sometimes I think it's a floor plan, but sometimes I think it's like a dress plan or something or some kind of clothing uh, movement, the world. I'm like, I'm trying to see the world. Papo Placado. I'm trying to see the world in there. That's interesting. I never saw it that way. Um, I, sorry, I got distracted by trying to see the world. Um, so this is a piece by an artist by the name of Anthony Lapore. And he is a Los Angeles-based artist and, and born and bred in Los Angeles. And not only is he... Um, a sculpture, but he's also a photographer. This is a photograph. Uh, he likes to play with um, the illusion of three dimensionality. And even in the title, which is called Blue Print, um, he's playing with what a blueprint is. Um, I'm just wanna make sure I don't leave anything out. Hold on about him. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Here I am. Okay, um, let's actually look at what a blueprint is um, before we keep going. Uh, so a blueprint is a designer plan. I don't think many of your students know what that is and may not have ever seen one. Um, I grew up with a dad who designed furniture, so I had seen them before and I actually always have found them very beautiful. Um, that's probably why I was attracted to this uh, art piece. Um, so the reason it's called blue is that it is a reproduction or a copy of a technical drawing or engineering drawing made by using a contact print process on blue light sensitive sheets. I wanna just admit that's a very technical description, but you probably are gonna to need to describe to your students also how it is used. It is a shared document. Um, between like a designer, an architect and a designer, uh, an engineer. And what it has are measurements, right? So if we're looking at the one on the right, that's rooms and it will say how, how wide the room is and how long the room is and how tall, no, why? yes, it does say how tall. And on the left, that is, I'm not sure what that thing is on the left. I believe it's um, some kind of mechanical the thing. <laughs> I don't really know because I got it. I don't actually know because it's a, a, a free, you know, thing I found on Google. Um, I'm just looking at also what comments that people said here. Someone said um, back to the art that it looked 2D and 3D at once. And I like that. Um, and someone else commented that the blueprints are both design and plan. Thank you for those comments and uh, all of the comments. I really appreciate your contribution and making this more dynamic. So now let's go to the next slide and then we can compare and contrast, which is always an important thing to do. The one on the left is called a blueprint and the one on the right is called a blueprint. <laughs> um, and so uh, in the chat, if you would uh, compare and contrast the differences, um, that would be interesting to see what people have to say about that. Um,
Oh, no one has anything to say. Oh, here we go. Texture and no texture. Very nice. Thank you. Although one is the illusion of texture, right? One is connected and the art looks like the plan disconnected. Negative space, lines and curves, 2D versus 3D. I like that. Yes. Blueprint more about the color. Blueprint is a Sorry, that's cut off, is a given format we understand. Yes, yes. Abstract, I don't know which one is abstract. I think the Anthony Lepore, <laughs> yes, um, definitely. Um, oh, sorry, I collage looking on the left. Yes, yeah, kind of, it's kind of like negative collage. Um, and someone says, I find my eyes move around each one in a similar way. That's interesting. Um, sorry, I like reading all these sharp and loose. Mm. One is more blue and one is more white. Those are great comments. Excellent. So that's really good. I think for your students just to look at and play with, um, just for their eyes to work on observation, um, and comparison, I think is always very important. Both, and I'm sorry, just reading comments, both have negative and positive spaces. One is rigid and one appears more free form. I mean, that's the fun thing about his is that it is the illusion, right, of free form. It isn't free form. Um, and I just want to kind of comment for a moment about the idea of a blueprint, because my understanding of it, you know, without looking it up was like, it's a plan, right? It's a plan and everyone knows what's what and you know uh, the wall is 10 feet long and that's the story and when before the pandemic we all had plans right and then the pandemic came and that changed everything and i think um i just want to make sure we're we keep that in our minds um as we look at these art piece this art piece tonight um next slide please so um, tonight we're gonna make three art pieces. Two are really more almost uh, sketchy and preparatory. Um, and they will, the first two will get possibly cut up to become the third. Um, I don't want anyone to be upset <laughs> about cutting up those first two. This is also a, a, an exercise in, in not getting too attached to our art. Uh, which is always good. Uh, you can always make another piece or three or four. Um, so I want to talk about each of these art pieces are um, a little different in the way we are viewing uh, are viewing them. Um, so so the word perspective is in there because it's really uh, the understanding of a, as a point of view, but then it's also a perspective is the representation of 3D objects or spaces in 2D artworks. Um, aerial perspective is the perspective seen from above and a blueprint is seen from above. Um, and in fact, it's seen from above in such a way that it is, you know, there's no details. There's, there's it, it's not emotional. It's not interpreted. Um, it's a bird's eye view but everything is very simplified. And our first drawing will be seen from that perspective. And when we uh, attempt to draw from our memories, it's going to be keeping everything very geometric and simple. And then finally, the uh, final perspective is from our imagination or mind's eye. Um, and I, I really like that one. Um, and I feel that people don't use it enough. Uh, the, what, what's wonderful about your mind's eye or your imagination is anything can happen. And um, you can play with perspective and you can play with dimension. And it's just, it's your interpretation and, um, and your memories. Um, and art is so personal that I think this is a very important perspective. Uh, next slide, please. So these are the materials, um, really pretty minimal. Uh, for the first thing we're gonna do, you need a crayon and a blue crayon, not just any crayon. 
Um, the blue crayon is making reference to the blueprint. Um, and um, you need a white sheet of paper. And you're going to need another white sheet of paper right after that. Um, and wait, actually, you probably need three. <laughs> three white sheets of paper. It doesn't have to be drawing paper, could be copy paper. If you have graph paper, fantastic. You could do that for the first one. I figured most people wouldn't have it, but you never know. Uh, later, we'll use scissors, glue stick or white glue, some colored construction, some recycle paper, really whatever you have in the house. Um, and I just, I can show you, this is like a final uh, of what, where we're going with this project, um, but I'll describe it more later, just so you understand. Um, it's going to be, it has parts and we're going to then cut them up. So we can stop the, um, the slideshow and we'll move over to my, uh, my object camera here. So here's my white sheet of paper and my blue crayon. The first thing I'm going to ask you to do is to close your eyes and to remember the space you were in during the really hard part of the, not that there weren't other hard parts, during the part of the pandemic where we were really isolated and locked down. And I mean, we were isolated for a long time. So I want you to imagine that space you were in most of the time, whatever space that was. Maybe it was the space you were teaching in. And I want you to kind of go through with your eyes closed, remembering where things were, where was the furniture, you know, where, where was everything? And I want you to float above the room like a bird or aerial perspective and look down remembering because you're about to write down what was in there. So you can flutter your eyes open and on uh, one of these sheets of paper, you can, I feel like I have one that has a list on it. Here we go. Um, you can make a list. In my case, I was in the dining room slash living room. Um, and so I'm, I'm just kind of put, I recommend having at least six things on this list. Um, you could have 10. And again, for your students, it really depends on their age. <laughs> Um, dining room table, four chairs, a buffet, a couch, coffee table. Um, that's me so far. So I'm going to give you another minute to write with your eyes open, <laughs> please. Because this is going to be your reference. Um, it's always good for kids to know that artists actually use reference, that they take the time to plan. And that there may be these free moments in creation, but that doesn't mean there isn't planning moments. There aren't planning moments. Okay, let me give you a few more seconds. This technique is called visualization but you probably know that um, where we're, you know, connecting to our senses and our memories. And you can notice also how you're feeling about this, um, how you feel about this room, how you feel about this memory. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull out another sheet of paper with your uh, reference list sure you can see this um, sort of in front of you because you know kids will forget what they're drawing I know I do <laughs> using your blue crayon we're going to draw essentially a blueprint of that room it's going to be really simple so in my case I have this dining room table where I sat, there's the chairs, everything becomes simplified into geometric shapes because I'm seeing it from above and it's really not detailed. You know, there's the door, there's a chair here, here's the couch, <laughs> sorry, that is wonky. Um, here's my coffee table, here's a chair here and a chair here. 
Here's another chair. This is a little table here. So you can draw out what's on your list now with this blue crayon. If you have time while you're waiting, you can color it in if you like. Now, when you do this with your, with your students, you're gonna take a little more time. I am going to rush through it today. So don't, don't feel upset. You can always finish it later. I'm here really to introduce these beats that you can play with later and of course make them your own. But I'm just coloring in or filling in with the blue. At the very least, I want you, you don't have to color it in, but I want you to have an opportunity to kind of have uh, planned it out <laughs> like a blueprint without the dimensions. I'm really stealing the blueprint more as a concept of a plan, a plan that gets messed up. people drawing so I'm just going to wait a minute. One of the things about what we're doing though we're also going to you know cut these things up um, possibly which helps I will hope will help your student be less attached. Um, okay. So now you can take your blueprint drawing and your list and just put them off to the side. And then using any of the drawing materials you have, whatever you like, colored pencils, crayons, pencil, you can draw anything that has made you feel more resilient during this time. It doesn't have to be realistic. Uh, it can be an object. It could be a person. It could be a room. It could be like bread making. It could be meditation, you know, like a, a symbol for meditation. Um, you can draw whatever you want. I, I'm, I've been kind of stuck on this idea of yarn. So I don't know. I'm going to, this doesn't really look like yarn, but maybe I have to go that way too. Um, so I'm imagining a big yarn ball. Oh, you don't have to use blue either. I just didn't switch my colors. Um, and, and I made a very simple thing more because I'm just demonstrating, but you can do a slightly more, this could be a time that your students make a more complicated picture, something that takes a little longer. It doesn't have to fill the whole space though. It's really what, they have to really do some thinking about what is that thing or object or person or, and they may need to do a little writing to think about that. What is something per, that helped them? And maybe continues to help them. Or maybe they forgot about it and they need to get back to it. When it was, the, pan when it was uh, the lockdown, my daughter and I went hiking every day and she hasn't hiked since school started. You know, it's that kind of thing, like remembering, oh, that really worked. So I'm gonna give you a few minutes to draw this. But since we have one final art piece, I'm not really going to give you as long as I know you truly need. I 
I, I, as I said uh, before, these two drawings could be done in one class as a part one. But again, you know your students, you know what they can do or how it would fit into your day. I'm going to give you, hmm, I don't want to run out of time. I'm going to give you like one more minute. And then, honestly, you may end up with three unfinished things that you can put together and become one big, wonderful thing, finished thing. All right. Um, sorry if that's a little short, but. The final part of this project, which I believe might happen on a separate day, given the time that people need, is that these two drawings are going to come together, possibly, into an art piece. This art piece will be really about transformation. Um, it will, everyone's going to have the same title. It's going to be my future resilience. And it's really going to be about remembering what makes them feel better and makes them feel stronger. And what are they holding on to and what are they going to let go of? So in my example here, I have some things that stick up. And that's really simply done by folding paper. So if you just fold it, you get that three-dimensional thing of something sticking up. So the things that stick up are things that I wanna keep that have been positive. Um, I envision these as scissors because I do a lot of cutting, paper cutting and yarn cutting. And then this is supposed to be like a ball of yarn. And this is passing through the living room and dining room drawing. And then I got rid of, meaning I cut away my computer, which is right there in the middle, the red. And I also cut away the television. Both of those things, I felt like I was on too much. Um, I, I haven't really, you know, that's, that's sort of like a future hope that I'm gonna keep working on that. So in this art piece, there will be collage. And in my case, I only use like a few colors. Um, I incorporated the drawing, the earlier drawing. You have to have some things cut away that you don't want and some things added or sticking up that you do want. Um, before you get to this, if you wanna take a photograph of your two drawings, if everyone wants to, if people wanna hold up their two drawings, we could take a little photo quickly. I don't know if people want to, um, before they get cut up, if you feel attached. Um, Otherwise, at the end, we're going to put a link in and then you're just going to upload your, um, there you go. Yeah, if people can see them. It helps when you press really hard. Ooh, ooh, Leah or Leah, I like what you did. It looks like meatballs. <laughs> I don't, yeah, okay, um, nice. So um, now we can let go of these because we took a photograph of them, right? We're like, yeah, I don't care. Um, so now you're, you're, I'm gonna give you, um, I don't know, is it like 10 more minutes or it's not even 10 minutes, is it? It's like five minutes. <laughs> Are we, uh-oh, oh, four minutes. Okay, I'm gonna give you four minutes to try to put this together into a more collage-like art piece, you know, it doesn't have to look like mine, trust me. It's just, that was my personal interpretation. Um, so you could also just start thinking about how you would put it together. Um, when you have four minutes, you may not actually produce, you may um, more have, have, have ideas that you wanna follow up with. And um, there is a link in the chat 
oh wait sorry it says i apologize uh, there's a there's a place to put the slideshow of your work so far and also you can share photos of your original drawings or your cut up collage in the slideshow um, you could also email like later um, after you uh, or now to um, lshilling at lacma.org um, the suggested questions for the art piece is that the question what are the suggested questions is that what you mean I don't know. It says because you're saying um, the parts that we want to leave, like you uh -huh. yes. So um, so what was your question? Because I want to get an idea of what to tell my students. Yes, of course. Um, I think the way I'm just looking at the lesson plan to see how I framed it. Um, the art piece is called my future resilience. So it's them envisioning taking these memories and putting them together to make a more positive future right they want to have maybe two things cut out that they want to let go of and two things that stick up that they want to hold on to And you just have to make sure that when they understand this, this idea of the paper folding, this is the simplest concept, but it is the easiest way to make something stick up into space, right? So you can just have a little, um, you know, this is what gets glued down, this part. I'm gonna make sure you can see that. And, but then any shape could be cut out here, or it could be something that's drawn on right there and then this is folded and that piece sticks up. So that's something you wanna hold on to. Or they could draw a picture on the white too, and then draw the picture and then they could, you know, glue it on. So for instance, where's my yarn? <laughs> I could cut this ball out and stick it on here and make it partially sticking up. And it's nice to have a combination of materials. Like I like the way the crayon and the colored paper looks together, you know? Let's see, maybe I can put this somewhere. This is my big ball of yarn. Yeah, maybe right in the middle. Um, Thank you. you. Can, yeah, sure. So now we're gonna have to go into um, breakout rooms. So please, when um, Susie sends you a request, um, please go into the breakout room. Um, basically, you're gonna be discussing your creative process and the connection, connections you made during this activity. Um, you're gonna discuss ways in which you could apply this activity to your classroom. And when you come back, um, I'd love to hear um, some, some of the connections and ideas that came up in the breakout rooms. Nice to see you all. Um, I'm curious what, um, if anyone wants to share uh, what they uh, talked about, about how they would use this in the classroom. If anyone wants to share, whether it's in the, if anyone wants to share in the chat. And by the way, the resources, programs and resources, and the link for the artwork slideshow is also in the chat. Does anyone want to share what was discussed? You could also unmute and share. You only have a couple more minutes. Oh, you can come on mic, yeah. Or not. <laughs> um, you could also let me know how you envision scaffolding it up in age or down. I think it's listed as being like third to eighth grade, but maybe you have uh, different age students and you're trying to figure out how to. So I, I'll, I'll jump in. Um, yeah, so thank you. I, I scaffold lessons for early childhood um, mm -hmm. in elementary. So um, I think this is appropriate for elementary grades. Um, I don't think I need to adjust anything because kids are, you know, line drawing in elementary. They could they definitely could talk about their space that are at home 
you know, and the, and the good things that, that brought, you know, relief from stress, but the early childhood, I probably wouldn't use those negative words. I probably would just do like, do, I would make it more like doodle drawing, Mm -hmm. collage project, and then maybe something fun and positive, um, and a different project that they can later cut and put into this project. Nice. That's great. I love it. Little. That's beautiful. Really beautiful. Did you take a picture of it? Or can you? Um, let's see. It says we all appreciated the value of visual art activities to support well-being. Good. I'm glad because I think people are. You know, it's a hard time, and I and I think we're not. It's not over. And so you know, just growing up wearing masks is weird. That's just one part of it. Um, anyone else want to comment? It says very important to discuss how COVID has affected them and allow them a place to share their feelings. I agree. I definitely agree. And sometimes it's just hard to even put their feelings in words. And that's why I was sort of imagining, you know, drawing something more abstract, like, or like that's less emotional seeming, like their space, you know, or uh, might help them, you know, just a little less painful somehow. Um, what about scaffolding like up? I, I mean, I, so someone's commented about how to scaffold down essentially. Um, what about scaffolding up? Does anyone teach high school? Do they think this would just work for high school? Or I don't even know if anyone's here from high school. <laughs> People are, maybe everyone's tired. <laughs> yes. I know. I am uh, teaching Hi. school. Um, I see, and I was sharing with my class, uh, my uh, colleagues in the room, that I, instead of the journal, I would like to have a kite uh, with the tail, which uh -huh. shows this kind of the same movement, mm. and connected also with geometry. Oh yeah, and having some uh, some figures in, you know, the drawing inside the kite could be. Uh, square could be rectangle inside that they could have color of other shapes having the students uh, um, uh, work on areas perimeters oh, and, that's great and even the connection uh, that is for basic but for more uh, advanced uh, geometry it could it could be the two x x and the size for perimeters and areas and equations so uh, mm -hmm. That was some connection for me for geometry, which is kind That's of great. for students. Yeah, love that. And would they work on it together? Were you envisioning it, or each person would have their own? Uh, I guess they, uh, every person is gonna have their own. Yeah. Uh, but at least, but at least finding the equation of a figure, not for too many, but at least for two figures they have inside the cut. Okay. That's nice. I like that. I like the math connection. Um, and someone else says here, it would definitely work for high school. Um, it's funny, I just suddenly thought it would also, since you were talking about a kite and flying, I was thinking about a mobile too would be interesting. Um, of course, those are always a drag because they get, you know, they all get caught up with each other. So, um, but maybe there's some way just to have a few things hanging. Ooh. That's nice. I like the way you used the, the blueprint background. That's really great. Thank you. And the bird. It's a combination of what the, the part in the middle, I, I did that really, really quickly right now. So and then nice. um, the, uh, the background is um, from Google. It's great. That's great. So it's a, a multimedia. Yeah, it's fantastic. But that's inspiring, you know? <laughs> Because it makes you feel like there's a lot of ways to do this. I also like you actually you have graph paper, um, which is really fun to use. Um, and I like the way the graph paper looks against this real blueprint, you know? Yeah, like, thank you. And so, yeah, during the pandemic, uh, well, that was like where I taught, which was actually outside mm -hmm. in the garden. And that was Lucky. really beautiful. And I would see when I was outside teaching, I would see 
hummingbirds and butterflies and other kinds of birds and just a lot of life, you know, and yeah. I could teach and still uh, enjoy the, the outside. And I also, during that time, I got really back into a, a lot of news mm. and television. And, and so, and I know some people say like the news, it makes them feel bad or it depresses them, but for some reason it, it soothes me. <laughs> well, that's great. So, yeah, um, whatever works, right? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's different. That's the beautiful thing. So well, thank you so much for sharing. Um, and thank you for being present tonight. Uh, I look forward to seeing you all hopefully uh, at the museum someday. Woohoo! Uh, in real life. So thank you. Thank you all so much. Um, have wonderful evenings. Have restful evenings. Tomorrow's Friday. Um, I hope you all have really beautiful weekends as well. And we'll look forward to seeing you at our programs in November and December. Thanks for coming out for this one. Good night, everybody. Take care. Stay healthy. <laughs>